Thanks for having me. So what does Vietnam's market mean to you? Well, Vietnam is a vibrant uh, market, uh, a vibrant society, lots of dynamic, lots of change uh, for over the last 20 years, uh, 90 million people approaching 100. So uh, it's a great opportunity to, uh, for business to operate here, uh, both domestic and, and foreign. And it's also a great opportunity for us uh, supporting companies, again, both domestic and foreign, to uh, expand and build and expand their business here. Uh, what would be a typical profile of a client uh, for BCG in Vietnam's market? Well, I'm not sure whether there's any typical client, but uh, we have clients among the public entities, so provinces, uh, we have SOEs, we have private companies, and we also have uh, some uh, foreign companies uh, who want to build their business here or expand their business here. Uh, people have talked a lot about the moving east from the west. How is that move right now from your experience? Well, I think it still continues. Despite the fact that growth rates in China and India, also in Southeast Asia, have come down a bit, but the growth rates here in the Asian emerging markets are still much higher than they are in Japan, in Europe, and North America. So we still have a continued movement from the west to the east, from the north to the south. And how is the rise of Asia affecting Western business models? Well, clearly it intensifies competition. I think many of the household names are under tremendous pressure in various industries, and we have to get used to uh, names that um, maybe 10 years ago nobody has heard before. If you think of uh, consumer electronics, Aheia is a great success story, uh, but also I think companies from India, Tata, who has taken over um, Jaguar and Land Rover and makes them a big success. So I think it, it really uh, creates new dynamic in the competitive landscape in many industries. And uh, it of course also creates lots of opportunities for, for Western companies to operate here in Asia where there is still lots of growth. When you talk to uh, Western companies who look to uh, offer an opportunity to operate in Asia, what seem to be the typical concern that they have about this market? Well, I think they, what they are looking for is uh, consumers, customers. Uh, they look for uh, growth. They also look for talent. Um, I think a lot of companies have moved their development centers or even research centers here to Asia. Um, and then, of course, they also look for opportunities to, uh, to expand their business. What they're worried, of course, is, as I mentioned earlier, the competition from Asia. Mm. And uh, in China, for example, they're also worried about uh, protection of intellectual property. Well, when talking about Asia, we cannot ignore China with their economic power. So in your view, how should an, a neighboring country like us, like Vietnam, should take advantage of this huge opportunity with a country like China? Well, China is a great source of, uh, of products. Um, and uh, buying uh, low-cost products is always an opportunity. Uh, but it's also a great market. And so uh, the Vietnamese companies can use uh, China to produce uh, products, but also to sell products. Now, I have learned that you know, the Vietnamese are quite concerned about China. But I think one needs to be uh, aware that no country is so dominant, no economy is so dominant, even if it looks uh, for a while like it. In the 60s, the Europeans thought the Americans would dominate everything. Um, and there was a big uh, anxiety about this. In the late 80s, uh, the Americans and the world were worried about the Japanese companies dominating everything, buying up everything. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, uh, countries around the world worry about China. But again, you know, uh, this is a challenge, but it's not um, a challenge that you know will not find also its uh, uh, its resistance and we will see that uh, China uh, will continue to grow but it will not be the dominant player. Um, you've been talking to many people in different markets in Asia as well. Uh, what is the market that you think that Vietnam would follow the same 
growth uh, model development path? Well, I think it's always dangerous to follow a role model because the conditions are very different. Many people look to Singapore and say this is the role model for economic development. Now, of course, we all are aware uh, Singapore is a city. It's very compact. Uh, it has very special uh, qualities, characteristics. So no country, maybe with the exception of Hong Kong, <laughs> could really be like uh, Singapore. Um, you could look to countries like uh, Thailand um, as a role model, um, maybe to a Korea. But again, the conditions are very, very different country by country. And so I think Vietnam has to find its own growth path. Clearly, it has to open up more. It has to ensure that there is lots of competition so that small, mid-sized, and also large companies have an opportunity to establish themselves, to thrive, to have a level playing field. And mm -hmm. then I think it's very important for uh, companies to have uh, you know, good institutions, good government institutions, so that the rule of law is ensured. Um, and, and so uh, companies really can operate in a secure environment uh, where law is something they can rely on. So what do you think about the, the roles of uh, state-owned enterprise in terms of supporting the whole economy, supporting uh, the companies to be more competitive? Well, I think there is a clear need uh, to uh, medium to long term to privatize state-owned enterprises. Uh, especially when state-owned enterprises have a quasi-monopoly mm. in certain sectors. The likelihood that a monopolist is really very productive and very efficient um, is not very high. And, and therefore, it is really important to create competition in each uh, sector, in each industry, and, and therefore really raise the performance of companies and of the economy overall. Uh, medium term, I would think it is important to privatize SOEs uh, and to ensure that there are lots of players in every industry. So how is the rise of the middle class consumers creating opportunities for business nowadays? Well, clearly everybody talks about the middle class because the middle class has more income, which they can yeah. uh, then also use in order to increase consumption. Um, and that is the big market. Um, and the larger the middle class, the larger the demand for cars, for motorcycles, for uh, all kinds of consumer products, for uh, housing. And that itself creates enormous uh, opportunities for companies and also growth in the overall economy. And it's the middle class that really drives this enormous dynamic. Uh, it cannot be just a small sliver of uh, top income earners. And can it, be, it cannot also be the the mass uh, market uh, when people are still very poor. So everybody hopes that the middle class will really uh, and does drive the, uh, the dynamic of the economy overall.